how to nail the first 30 seconds of your cold call if you're wholesaling real estate. Now this does apply to people in other industries that are cold calling, just cold calling in general. I think these are good practices, practices that I've learned when I was wholesaling way more back in the day or a few years ago. Now these are good practices that I've applied to my real estate business, especially when I was cold calling more. When I first started my wholesaling business, I would do all the cold calling, then I hired a cold caller, and then I started working just real estate agents. And so I do not cold call like that, like I used to, or even wholesale to that degree, but I'm looking at real estate investment properties for long-term growth. And so that's my main field of study, but there's been a lot of things that I've learned over the years of cold calling different customers that I want to relay in today's video. And so I do have videos on my channel just explaining like my cold call scripts, especially for wholesale properties, properties that you're looking for. But I think this video will once again apply to different types of properties, properties with low equity, real estate agents looking to cold call, software sales, and other things of that nature. The first thing that I want to talk about when you're cold calling, a very good practice to have is to be quick. Sometimes how to nail the first 30 seconds of your cold call is to get a rejection and to move on to your next 30 seconds, right? The first 30 seconds, the best way to handle that is to get a no sometimes, right? So you can move on. So move quickly. So that's the first part of this video I want to talk about, like just the speed, the efficiency of your cold calls, because we know that it's a numbers game. And yes, you do want to get as many yeses on the phone call and see or sense the motivation from the person and keep them on the phone as long as possible. But if you know this is not a deal, if you know that this person is not motivated, you have to move quickly. Yeah, sometimes a no can be a blessing. And then just talking about quickly or just being quick, even being quick on your phone call, right? These days, people are not trying to sit and talk to anybody, random person on the phone. So when you're on the phone, you have to sound quick, right? You have to even sound like you're busy in a way, right? Because you know that they may be busy and you don't want to come off as you have nothing else to do. Like some things that I like to say when I'm on the phone or when I'm cold calling is say, hey, quickly or one last thing or real quick or before I let you go or I just have this one last thing. So it's like, okay, I'm about to finish. I have to go, you know, type of thing. And so I think that truly helps. It can in a way create a sense of urgency, right? In a way it can like put in the seller's mind that you have somewhere to be too, right? And they may want in some sort of way, try to stay on the phone with you if you promote that sense of urgency to be quick on the phone. Or I think also it just respects their time. Like, hey, I don't want to waste any of your time. I just have this one last thing to tell you, things of that nature. So when you're on the phone call, just make sure you make that sense of urgency, you know, be quick, be efficient in your phone calls and just making sure you express that you make sure, Hey, I know your time is valuable. This will be real quick. And so like talking about wholesaling real estate, I think is talking about the house or just going straight to the point where you don't have to introduce the company you're with or necessarily, you know, exactly everything about yourself or what you're doing. Just kind of go straight to the point, talk about the house, talk about just the different characteristics and making it known that you know them and that you know about their house. And that brings me to my second point. You have to, in a way, be the person that they know. And so when you're on the phone call with a potential seller, you have to be relatable. You have to make it seem like you're a friend, right? What you're trying to do, you're trying to help someone out in a situation where they do want to sell their house. And so make it seem like, you know, talk with them like a friend, talk like you already know them. That's the key thing. So if you see their name, you see their address of the property, what I like to do is to say, Hey, Sally, I don't say, hello, is this Sally? I say, hello, Sally, or Hey, Sally, this is Matthew. If they want to correct me, they'll correct me. You don't have to worry about this. And then they introduce yourself and then you go right into the property or whatever thing that you want from them or trying to buy from them or what you're trying to sell from them. So this example with houses, you go, Hey, I see that you own this property on this street. I was wondering, and then you go on to talk about other things. You see, I didn't even ask like, oh, do you own this property? Or do you happen to know who owns this property? I say this, and I think that does different things. Number one, it makes it seem like, oh, okay, this person is knowledgeable. They already know me. They have my information, which can actually put questions in their mind. But also I think it's just a relatability. It makes it seem like this person may already know me and I know them. And then another thing that does 
does is if you're wrong about like their name or the address of the property, people like to teach people, right? And so like, if you're wrong about the house, be like, oh no, no, I do not own the house. Or no, 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 I don't go by Sally. I go by this name. And that creates some sort of good feeling in that seller that they can teach you something like, no, I do not own this house or no, this is not how I go by. And I think that's great for a call. And you can ask, okay, do you know someone who owns the house or are you related to someone who owns the house and things of that nature. So make it seem like you know the person and they know you. Now, let's say you go through, you know, the name, the address, you talk about, you know, you create that sense of urgency. Now you have to start towards the end of that first 30 seconds, start talking about like, or go more into your script, right? So number one, don't act like you're reading from a script. Of course, everyone knows that. And just with time it comes natural, maybe your first few months, it may sound robotic, like you're going through some steps, but over time it will get natural. But when you're heading into that conversation or in that conversation, once again, be efficient, go straight to the points that you're looking for in today's market. And then also gauge the seller, gauge what type of seller they are. Do they want to slow down, slow down with them, you know, match their tonality, match their demeanor and their mood. Like if someone is more serious or more straight to the point, be that type of person, right? This person is more peaceful or calm, you know, have more of a calm, soothing voice when you speak with them. In cold calling with wholesale real estate, so of course you like to target, okay, why they're selling and you don't actually have to directly ask why they're selling. You can ask about, okay, what are their goals with this property? What are you looking to do? What's your timeline of selling? And then you can start talking about, okay, what's the condition of the property? What's the type of property that they're selling and things of that nature so you can better gauge on what you're looking for and what type of offer to offer them. Now, a lot of people, I think if the conversation is going well, you can do everything in one phone call. You can close the deal in one phone call. It may take some follow-ups in order to get a deal done because houses are a huge deal, right? It's probably the biggest purchase for most people in their lives. And so it's going to take some follow-ups. It's going to take some time. I think that first conversation is pivotal to set the groundwork and just create that relationship in that rapport with your seller. Hopefully this will shed light on some good tips on how to nail your first 30 seconds. I could have gone specific into the script. Like I said, you know, you talk about the house, you talk about why they're looking to sell, you talk about the property condition, right? What's wrong with the house, right? So you can let investors know things of that nature. That's pretty much it, but I just wanted really to talk about more of the psychology of things or more of, okay, how to talk, how to be better, because I know a lot of beginners, any Anybody can read a script, but how do you make that script personable to you? And how do you make it come across where it sounds natural? I think those points that I talked about earlier will really make a difference in your co-calling journey. All right, you all make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll talk to y'all later.